Hi, and welcome to a new tutorial. This time, we'll be looking at some digital resources that will enable your students to conduct their research more efficiently. This tutorial came partially from my own struggle as an elementary school teacher where I was trying to find a kid-friendly uh, digital resource for my grade 3 students to do their research in science. What, is, what I discovered is that uh, whenever I asked them to do their research, they went straight to our Google search engine, type in whatever they were looking for. As a result, they were overwhelmed with the, what the search engine had to offer. Many of them struggled to discover the right information they were looking for. Many of them did not understand the language that um, was used there because um, so all of my students are ELL learners. So, so you got me thinking. There, there has to be there have to be some resources geared towards school children, geared towards young learners, uh, where language will be graded more proper to their age, where resources will be a bit limited uh, to or be more comprehensible for students of that age. And uh, thankfully, there are such resources, and today I'm going to share with you some of the uh, websites that I've been using. The first website that we are going to look at is going to be Kids Britannica. To access this website, click on uh, the internet browser that you use. In my case, it's Safari. Your internet browser can be different. Uh, can be Google Chrome. I'm going to type kidsbritannica.com. So let's say this week, we're going to imagine that this week, uh, me and my students are doing research on types of rocks. So I'll get my students to access Kids Britannica via their iPads and search for rock. We have uh, two articles here. We have Igneous Rocks, we have Rocks. So as a student, I might click on rock geology and um, get a general information so I just want to stop here for a second and uh, drag your attention to the layout of this website It's beautiful it's it's simplistic there's nothing really irrelevant to the information they're looking for uh, there's a quick did you know fact uh, there's a little chunk of text here uh, there are a couple of images here we can browse again there uh, some images that are conducive to their understanding. They're not overwhelming. Uh, there's a little video clip here as well. They can go ahead, once they, do, once they read uh, the introduction, they can uh, click on the subtopic and read about types of rocks. There's a rock cycle here. They can also, if they discovered a hyperlink that uh, could help them understand and do their research, they can click on the hyperlink and move on and read about something relevant. So I'm going to go back and point out this little notification window to read the full article activated free. There's one limitation to using Kids Britannica. It's paid for. If you want to have a full access, you need to uh, pay a subscription fee. It's not much, um, but still you have to pay. What you can do as a teacher, you can start a free trial, which uh, will enable you to use the full version for about seven days. Uh, or you can continue using a free uh, version. Uh, the article is a little bit limited, but they're still, they're still okay. Still some information the students can use. Or uh, if the school can uh, purchase a school license, I think this is the best scenario. There's one more thing I want to point out. In this uh, little uh, space here, uh, you can uh, differentiate between different um, level of abilities in your class, where some students will be more comfortable uh, staying in kids' version of the website. Some students, even in uh, your grade, grade 3 or grade 4, will be able to move on and read related articles, but in students' section, which is geared towards grade 6 and 8. So we're going to click on students. As you can see, more uh, the layout is different right off the bat. We can see that, and there are more more details, uh, more information, more text, more complexity is different as well. The complexity goes up, but still, some students will be able to comprehend and retrieve some meaningful data, some meaningful information from the students section. But again, most of the time will be uh, right here in kids section. You can decide by yourself. Tell your advanced students how to use, how to access the student section. That's cool. It is for, for high school, but still can be uh, useful for those of you who teach older 
kids. So this is Kids Britannica. To wrap it up, uh, extremely helpful tool, really simple, really easy to use, and if you can, you can start a free free trial. Then what students will need to do, so once they uh, go to Kids Britannica, uh, they will need to log in with your username, your email address. That's so once they they will need to log in. What I did with my class, I projected my email address and password on the board and let them use my email and my password to access the Kid Britannica. And one login and one password could work for the entire class. Uh, try it out, uh, start your free trial. You don't have to pay anything. Give it a go and then uh, see if your school can purchase a license for you. But this is a beautiful source. The next encyclopedia we're gonna be looking at is geared towards younger students. We're gonna go to pebblego.com. Right, you should see that uh, on your screen if you go to pebblego.com. It's designed for K-2 learner. So whereas um, Britannica uh, can be used across K to K-10 probably, uh, Pebble Go is more suitable to really young learners, early elementary K to two. For the purpose of this tutorial, I created a, a sample account, uh, which you can use as well if it's still active. Um, and to use this, to use my uh, account that I created, uh, let's go to login. This is what we're going to use. This is the email that we're going to copy. Now, in your case, you will need to type it up. Uh, we're going to log in with Pebble Go. Um, this is today's the day of the recording, uh, February 20th, uh, 2018 A at gmail.com. And the password is right here. Okay, so at any time, pause the recording. The password is 73752. Pause the recording if you like. Type this password up and let's go. Once you are in Pebble Go, you will see different categories. We have animal science, social science, studies, dinosaurs, animals, and um, it's clear that this resource is beautiful for elementary where, for elementary school students who concentrate most of the time on the following topics. Click on animals and animal classification, animal classification. here. So the good thing about Pebble Go is that I don't even have to click. Once I hover, about invertebrates, about insects. There's a, a voice over, really nice voice over. So if young students struggling with decoding a, a word, there's a voice over. About invertebrates. Right, uh, this week we are talking about invertebrates. I'm gonna click on invertebrates. I have a little article here. So I can, I can listen. Millions of animals are classified as invertebrates. I can pause the recording. So if I'm struggling as a student, if I'm struggling with decoding a, a word, I can play it back. They have no backbone. Insects and earthworms. Are as you can see, the pace is beautiful. They're not too fast, not too slow, really easy to follow. There's some pictures, visuals here, and the design is just amazing. It's so sleek, uh, nothing uh, really uh, to distract me from from reading, from exploring, I can I can go ahead and look at some subtopics here. Uh, each subtopic has a voiceover. Most invertebrates lay eggs. Right, there are some our hyperlinks here. So if I want to discover more about insects, something related to my research, I can do that. Let's try and use search again. Let's try look for rocks. We have different kinds of rocks. Different kinds. If I want to play it back, I just click. There are three main and play it back. You can pause this recording and explore this uh, website by yourself. Try to search for something that you are currently doing with your students and see if you can find it. A beautiful resource. Sign up for a free trial and see if it works for you. So uh, we've looked at Britannica. We looked at Pebble Go. The third uh, resource and the final resource that we're going to look at is going to be a kid-friendly dictionary. 
what I usually did in the past. I would have、um, a couple of、uh, paper-based dictionaries in my class, and whenever our students are struggling with spelling, they would go and find a word in the paper-based dictionary.、Uh, the drawback is that it's extremely time-consuming, and it's skill in itself. It's a useful skill by all means, but it takes away a lot of time from learning. So, what I'm going to show you is a digital tool that could help your students with spelling and doing their research as well. Because when they are doing their research, they're creating papers. And they might want to or use a word that they don't know how to spell yet. Access this resource. We're going to go to kids. dot words myth. dot com. dot net. Kids words myth. dot net. Once there,、uh, we have a little search field here. And what I like about this. Dictionary is that even though students may not be sure about the correct spelling of the word, they can still sound it out.、Um, let's say that、um, a student is struggling with a word.、Um, students can check their spelling. Let's say I have a student who is struggling with the word because they don't know how to spell because they don't know how to say it, but they don't know how to spell it. So what they can do, they can sound it out and spell it the way they hear it. B Because, click go. Then going through those words, they can see base became be because. Oh, this is the word I'm looking for. They can click on this word and see the correct spelling. Because they can click on pronunciation as well. Because, because there is a definition here for. The reason that, and there's an example. He passed the test because he had studied hard. So as you can see, examples and the layout is kid friendly. So now, when、uh, when some of my students are struggling with spelling, they、uh, no longer ask me how to spell the word. They go to Kids Wordsmith, type it up the way they hear it, and try and、uh, type it up the way they hear it, and try to look for、uh, the accurate spelling. So、uh, let's wrap it up. Today we were looking at digital resources that will enable students to be more efficient while doing research. The first resource we looked at was Kids Britannica. While there's an option to create an account and activate the free trial, there's also an option to continue using the Kids Britannica for free. The articles are limited, but still there is some useful information presented in a kid-friendly manner. The next resource we look at was Pebble Go. Pebble Go is more geared towards young learners, K to two. Free trial is available there. Finally, we looked at Kids Wordsmith Dictionary, a free dictionary that students can use to check their spelling. I hope this tutorial has been helpful. That next time you're doing your research, you'll try one of these resources. Thank you. Have a nice day.